Hello, my name is Nikki Bray, and I am the Adaptive Learning Fellow for WCET. Today I have with me Dr. Robert Manzer, the Provost and Chief Academic Officer for American Intercontinental University. Hi, Dr. Manzer, and welcome, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. It's great to be with you. Excellent. Well, I'm just going to pose a few questions for you that I think our community uh, would like to know more about. And we're focusing primarily on the higher ed administrators. So you guys have uh, the only fully adaptive Masters of Education program. Is that correct? We do. Um, we have adaptive learning in all of our classes, or we will by the end of this year. Um, we've got it in our, our, our two new specializations in elementary and secondary education. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's a great thing uh, because um, we've got a, a program for teachers. It's, it's a professional development program, so it's not a licensure or certification program. Um, but it, it, it involves them in adaptive learning so that they have the experience of students in adaptive learning. And they're running into this in the classroom all of the time now. So it actually, I think, gives them an advantage of um, being able to see this from the student's perspective. So when they think about using these tools in the classroom, which are um, omnipresent these days, um, they've got a better handle on it. So, um, so we're really excited about that, and uh, I think it gives our students a leg out. So yeah, I was going to ask you, like, how do you think it's impacting uh, these future teachers or the teachers' future careers? And do you think that it's really brought about an awareness, you know, to their instructional practices? I think so. I mean, it, it's still pretty new. Um, so we've only really had it in there now for uh, for just over a year, and it's been moving out uh, from the core classes into the specializations. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think so. I think it's an additional layer of knowledge that the, the, the faculty have. Um, and a, a number of uh, programs will have an education technology component to them. Um, but, but with adaptive, you really are taking it to the next level. It's the cutting edge. It's an opportunity to think about learning from the perspective of adaptive technologies. And, and the more you do that, I think the more you're positioned to use those technologies, um, even if they're you know, off the shelf, third party created uh, instruments that are just being plugged in, you're able to bring that, uh, that, that perspective of having gone through adaptive learning, seeing its potential, and seeing how it fits in the overall classroom. And I guess that, that leads to a point that I really probably should have made earlier, which is that um, uh, adaptive learning is this tool that goes into a classroom that can become a very effective classroom because you figured it out. Once you put it in, though, it, your work's not done. Uh, because once you put it in, you've got to re rethink everything else that you do. And we are in the process of rethinking discussion boards and live chats, all of the elements of our learning model. And the reason is, is because adaptive learning um, seems to be so effective with the students. I mean, not only do they um, really like it, but our results are improving. So what we're doing is saying, well, if we get this kind of results with this component of our classroom, um, are we getting the same results with our discussion boards? Are our discussion boards as good as they can be? What about our live chats? Um, are those really adding the value? So I guess in some ways, adaptive learning, when you put it into your classroom, it ups the bar because it is something that students really take to. Um, and it's not hard to see, right? It's a personalized education. And in some ways, the challenge is, um, well, we seem to be able to work so successfully with adaptive learning, but adaptive learning, at least at the stage that it's at now and that we're using it, it doesn't do everything that you want to do. Right, it doesn't help students write better. It doesn't help students communicate better. It's it's enormously helpful in having students um, learn uh, a lot of content. But but what about these other things? So then you have the challenge of okay, students are really doing well and 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 thriving on the adaptive learning modality. Um, what do we do now about you know 
individual projects or what do we do when we're trying to teach them writing, they experience a, a drop off. Um, so it really does sort of put the challenge to us to rethink how we do skill development, like writing and, and so forth. Um, how do we do that in a way that's efficient and effective? And, and that's what we're doing. And so I really uh, want to underscore how adaptive learning has been a cap catalyst for our uh, scrutiny and rethinking of the whole learning model. And, and where it's really worked the best is where we've been able to uh, engage faculty, excite faculty, and have them lead the way. Uh, because ultimately, these things are very complicated, and, and they're ultimately going to be refined by a lot of faculty working uh, in the space, thinking it through, coming up with something that nobody else anticipated, and, and are adapting to that insight and going a different direction. And, and, uh, but, but it's really, uh, as I said, it's, it's been a wonderful um, opportunity to uh, set a very high goal, which is um, how do we improve student learning as efficiently and as effectively as possible, meeting that student where they are and, and moving them down that, uh, that pathway of learning.